Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Brain eating amoeba. Uh, Kurz gesagt. Great channel, preemptive like. The most horrible parasite brain eating amoeba. It's just a life form trying to live like the rest of us. Just don't attack me, please. Let's do it. My name's Connor. I like to learn. Original link to the description, top of the to the video, top of the description. Discord also there. Love to have you. Let's go. A war has been going on for billions of years that breeds well-armed monsters who struggle with other monsters for survival. Having no particular interest in us, most of them are relatively harmless, as our immune systems deal with their weapons easily. But there are exceptions. Negleria fowleri is an amoeba that has not only developed a deadly taste for human brains, but is also a match for our defenses and stars in dramatic headlines. What happens when this monster enters your body? Negleria fowleri is an amoeba, a microbe with a nucleus, one of the smallest life forms on Earth. It is a voracious hunter of bacteria and other critters that it devours whole and rips into pieces. Like many amoebae, it is able to transform into different stages that help it survive. But most of the time, Negleria fowleri is in its trophozoite stage, during which it looks like a squishy blob with tiny arms and hunts. What is that? Is that is that micrometers? Oh my god! So I, I'm not going to go into a story. Let's watch. To help it survive, but most of the time, Negleria fowleri is in its trophozoite stage, during which it looks like a squishy blob with tiny arms and hunts, divides, and thrives. Its natural home is in fresh water, ponds, rivers, lakes, and hot springs. But unfortunately, it also feels happy in pipes, swimming pools, fountains, or spas when they're not properly treated. The warmer the water, the more it thrives and multiplies. So in the summer, when humans seek to cool off and enjoy themselves, the chances are highest that both species will interact. Because this makes it hard to avoid, millions of people regularly have contact with the amoeba, especially in warmer climates, and many people even seem to have antibodies against it. And this is mostly okay. You can even swallow it without consequences. Things turn bad when people dive or swim in water contaminated with the amoeba, and water splashes high up into their noses. In a single drop of lake water, there are millions of viruses, bacteria, and amoebae, and that isn't really a big deal. But Negleria fowleri is different. Let's zoom into the nose of an unsuspecting victim enjoying a great summer day and see what happens. First of all, the amoeba doesn't really want to be inside your nose, as it's not really looking for trouble. Uh, de uh details, okay, understood. Interesting how you can swallow it, but but if you in get it in your nose, okay. It just wants to eat a few bacteria. Instead, it's greeted by your natural defenses. Unfortunately for humans, Negleria fowleri happens to be exceptionally good at generally flying under the radar of your immune system. For example, the inside of your nose is covered by mucosa, a slime filled with chemicals that kill or stun possible invaders or alert immune cells. But Negleria fowleri is not particularly bothered by them and instead calmly checks out the scenery, mildly annoyed about the whole ordeal. Now, if you are unlucky, the tiny critter stumbles over something that actually sparks its interest. Nerve cells. Your nose is filled with a large network of olfactory nerve cells that pick up molecules from the outside and transmit their information to your olfactory bulb, the center of smell in your brain. To do their job, these cells talk to each other by releasing various messenger chemicals and recognizing them via specific receptors. One of the most important of these chemicals is acetylcholine. Through sheer evolutionary bad luck, Negleria fowleri happens to have receptors that recognize acetylcholine. And it seems to attract them irresistibly, a little like moths that are attracted by light. So as your olfactory nerve cells do their job, using plenty of acetylcholine to talk to the brain, Negleria fowleri enters your tissue. 
It seems to follow the chemical signals upstream. Neutrophils, crazy suicide warriors, begin to attack the amoebae. Individually, they have no chance against them, as the invaders are large and pretty buff fighters used to dealing with tough enemies. Chad. So the defenders swarm the intruders and kill them either by vomiting chemicals that punch holes into them or by literally ripping parts of them off and devouring them. But the Neglaria Fowlery train is still on track, and while the neutrophil attacks slow them down, they continue to follow the olfactory nerves to their final destination, your brain. This process can take between one and nine days, and you'll probably not notice anything during that time. Until the amoebae reach the olfactory bulb, the center of smell and entrance to your brain. Your brain cells are nothing more than helpless victims, and they all release that wonderful acetylcholine. Neglaria Fowlery initiates a massacre and releases an onslaught of various attack molecules. Some of them are basically little bombs that rip holes into your cells on contact so their pieces can be eagerly consumed. But Neglaria Fowlery is now... I have a question, guys. You know how... You know the, the, the question of whether there's ever been a developed species way in the past, you know? Um, what if... Like, who's to say, you know, clearly it, it, intelligence isn't linked completely to brain size since humans don't have the uh, largest brain. I, you know, I think there are whales and uh, the elephant. Definitely some whales that have a larger brain. So it, it's not like a small thing can't be smart or, or whatnot. And so what if there was a, a civilization of, of some kind of bacteria size am i going crazy like bacteria size things that you would never be able to detect you know size is is relative and and what if it it just makes me think could there have been never mind are multiplying and it's also becoming really creepy in a feeding frenzy it can develop up to a dozen suckers called food cups that look like giant eerie mouths the amoebae engage your brain cells suck them in and rip large bites out of them while they're still alive now things escalate quickly and the disease that will kill you sets in alerted by the massacre millions of immune cells neutrophils eosinophils and microglias invade the infected tissue which is a problem. Your immune system is dangerous and not exactly a careful fighter. It's like burning down a forest to kill the wolves inside it. A really bad idea in the brain. They waste no time and attack the amoeba using all the weapons available to them from chemicals to trying to eat them alive. Neutrophils explode themselves to erect barriers spiked with deadly chemicals. Jeez. A fierce battle ensues. Neglaria Fowlery can actually fight back, itself attacking and killing many immune cells. The immune system now throws everything it has at the invader, but in vain. The complement system, tiny protein bombs that can kill intruders on their own, are easily disabled. Antibodies, usually one of your super weapons, are just destroyed or swallowed. A high fever that usually slows enemies down does nothing as the amoeba actually thrives in the heat. All the while, the amoebae continue to multiply, fight, and devour your brain cells. A disastrous chain reaction is taking place. One major thing your immune cells do when they fight is to cause inflammation, which directs large amounts of fluid from your bloodstream into the site of an infection. So as the battle rages on without a clear winner, more and more fluid enters the is this going to cause it to go up against the skull and the brain? At this point, the human will feel symptoms that quickly escalate. It all begins pretty vaguely, a headache, fever, nausea, and vomiting. As the battle spreads rapidly through the brain, serious symptoms appear from confusion, inability to concentrate, to fatigue, seizures, and hallucinations. The brain swells up massively, but can't expand due to the bones surrounding it. So it compresses and disables the brainstem that controls things like breathing. Usually within a week, the patient dies. Up to 97% of the patients infected by the amoeba share this fate. In almost all cases, by the time an infection by Neglaria fowlery is recognized, the disastrous battle for the brain is already so far along that there is almost nothing to be done. 
Not only do we currently not have effective treatments, there are also an abundance of open questions about how an amoeba that usually enjoys its life in open water is able to overcome our immune system so effectively. So how worried do you need to be about this horrifying killer amoeba? Well, not very. While the Megleria phalari is clearly extremely deadly and the infection truly horrible, there have only been a few hundred cases in the last few decades. You are way more likely to drown in a pool than to get infected. Not a Statistics like this, like you're more likely to, to like get eaten by a shark than, than die in an airplane or, or you're more likely to drown than to this or you're more likely to get in a car accident than this. All of these statistics... Just they're, they're kind of like, well, it's so general. It's like, well, what if you don't live near the water? Then no, it's it's not. You're not going to die by die from a shark. Or what if you're a really good swimmer or a really bad swimmer? Then there there's a much big chance for the bad swimmer to, to drown or how often you're near water or. And I know that averages take all of these things into account, but I, I think when you average it that much, it just it becomes or like if you're a really good driver or a really bad driver who both drive an equal amount of time, well, the bad driver is much more likely to get into a, a car accident than the good driver. And so I, I get statistics like this are, are good on average, but it, it's just like they kind of get under my, not a pet peeve. You are way more likely to drown in a pool than to get infected. Yeah. Not only does the amoeba need to be flushed high up your nose, it also needs to get a good grip, and it also has to make its way through the first lines of your defenses. Ultimately, Nagleria phalari is neither evil nor a huge public exactly. health risk. But every year, some unlucky people have to deal with it. We still have so much to learn about it, and until we find a way to treat it, Nagleria phalari will continue to be this vague and horrifying thing, hunting in puddles and lakes. I don't know if women have to be worried about... Uh, although, isn't there a one uh, certain, like, a worm or something that if you're uh, going number one in a river or something, it can, like, crawl, you know... Um, but like you said, like, uh, right away, um, it's weird, uh, kind of attaching these, like, evil things to it. Yeah, it's horrifying. Oh, it'll eat your brain and everything. But it's just another life form that evolved that's trying to do its thing. And its thing isn't even trying to eat your brain. It's just like, yeah, it's in a place where this can go up your nose and then it can be trapped and then it can see your brain and that's a food source and it goes after it. And I think that's a much better way to look at it. And sometimes pools, usually for bacteria. Tell that to and someone infected with it. I know. For people. And very occasionally for people. Oh, hey. Nice pet. Who are you? It's me, your existential dread. Um, okay. I'm here to make you question your own existence and everything you hold dear in life. Could you not, please? Too late. Just look at all these amazing posters full of humbling visualizations, like the scale of the universe. Look how huge it is and how small you are. Look at the Education Edition. How it dives deep into the history of evolution or all the other Education Edition. Ooh, ecosystem one. Whenever I look at science stuff. So you might, I eventually graduated with, if anyone's still here. Hi, you're my favorite. If you are, if, if you, I've said in a few times, I graduate. So I love learning about history. All right. That's always been my, I love, I love learning about a lot of things, many, many things, but history in the past year, few years has been a big thing. And I, I graduated four year, with a four-year degree in history, right? BA, history. But that might make someone be like, well, then how do you, why are you trying to... I, I hopped around, and in the beginning where I, I went to school in New York, and then I finished in Providence, um, I, I was going around different... At first, I didn't have a, a major, and I was just liberal arts, whatever. And then I went into chemistry, and then I saw physics because I thought, hey... 
I, I might be able to do that. And then I realized I'm just not smart enough when it gets to that really serious chemistry and bio or whatever stuff. And then I was kind of like, oh, what am I going to do? Well, history just kind of happened to be a good, uh, you know, a, a, a major I, I could finish my schooling in because at this point I just wanted to get a degree. And so, okay, history, that fits. I'm not, I don't hate history. Let's do it. And ever since I've, I've been wanting to kind of fill in the gaps and that's why I love watching history stuff. Whenever I see biology or chemistry stuff, I, it, it just like fills me with, you're just not, you're not smart enough. You, I'm going, never, just forget it. Or all the other scientific fields to make you feel bad for all the stuff you don't know. Or look at this one, it glows in the dark. But Dread, these do make me feel good actually. They do fill me with excitement and awe about how amazing our universe is. And I love learning. And look Get how pretty here. they are. No! I can't persist in the presence Get of here. If you too want to overcome your existential dread, make your life beautiful and also support Kurzgesagt so we can put thousands of hours into our videos and release them for free, you can get these and many, many more amazing posters or shirts or so many more things in our shop. We put as much care into you our products me. as- No, I, I actually- uh, this isn't a guilt trip. I actually am considering buying that, uh, um, the, the world map with the- with the- Ecosystem like desert. Um, awesome video. Check out that stuff. Helps them out. Cool. It was fun. Again, it's not evil. It's just a living thing, trying to eat your brain. See you guys.